Welcome to the Landscape Leadership Podcast. I'm your host, Chad Diller. I'm the Director of Client Success here at our agency. If you own or work for a company in the lawn care or landscaping industry, you're in the right place. This is where we share our candid thoughts on sales and marketing as it relates to companies just like yours. So thank you for joining us. So here at Landscape Leadership, we're kind of in a unique position compared to other marketing agencies. And I thought this would make a really great topic for today's podcast and just hang with me for a minute. Landscape Leadership, our problem is we can't work with most of the people who want us to help them. It drives me crazy because I really like helping people. To give you a little background, we can only work with about 15 to 20 clients at a time and our clients rarely cancel. In fact, the last two, three years, our clients keep asking us to do more work for them. And so that creates an inability for us to add a lot of new clients. The clients that we work with are lawn and landscape companies with annual revenues over $2 million. And so a lot of the companies that reach out to us are actually below that threshold. And you might be asking yourself, so why does that matter to me? Maybe you are one of those smaller companies. Maybe you're not, maybe you're larger. Why is it important to you? Well, you might have the same question that I get asked over and over and over again by lawn care and landscape company owners. The question is this, how do we find a great marketing agency to help us grow our business? And that's the question we're going to cover today. So as we do this, I want you to realize that there are many options out there. I do not have a specific agency that I can recommend. I get asked that a lot. And it's also really hard to find true expertise. You're going to find uh, marketing agencies that are what I call a generalist, meaning they work for all types of industries and they could be a decent option for you. And you may even find other green industry focused agencies that somehow started working with lawn care and landscaping companies along the way and got a lot of them and realized, hey, this is a cool industry. I kind of want to specialize. Those could be decent options for you as well. I don't know. But what I want to do today is give you 14 really important questions to ask any agency you interview. Again, keep in mind that expertise varies. You're going to pay more for true expertise. It can make you more successful and it can make the process easier for you. So I'm going to talk a lot about expertise and contrast that with, well, an agency that doesn't have a lot of expertise. Keep that in mind. Use these questions to sort out really bad fits. Not every agency you're going to talk to is probably going to score a 14 out of 14 on this. So let's get started. So the first group of questions kind of center around the positioning of the agency and their clients, who do they work with? So question number one is this, what do you define as a good and a bad fit client for your marketing agency? This is really important because it's just as important for you to be a good fit for them as they are to be for you. Is it spelled out on their website? If that's the case, they have a clearly stated positioning strategy of who's an ideal client because they know that they can help them. For example, some of the companies that we won't work with are product companies, material vendors, franchises, and the list goes on. The reason is because we've found over time that we can help certain clients better than others and that we can have a more meaningful impact for certain clients versus others. And we've built our team to be able to address that. So make sure your positioning matches up with that first question. Question number two is this. How can I learn more about your active and past clients? Some of the things I would look for on a marketing agency's website is a roster of clients that they work with. You should be able to determine whether they are existing clients or just maybe it looks like they have a lot of clients, but it's over the span of the last 15 years. So that's important to be able to determine if it's a current client or a past client. You might want to also understand how many years they actually work with those clients, because if they just build a website, they could have a huge list of clients for small projects like that. So understand the level of depth that they've worked with these clients. In a lot of cases, you really should be able to explore what they did for clients. They should have case studies like videos or written case studies, or at least at minimum, a list of 
bullets of things that they've done for those clients and some statistics of how they succeeded for those clients. You should also be able to find testimonials on their website. So clients should be able to, in two, three sentences, be able to say what it's been like working with this agency and what they've gotten out of it. Question number three is this, what is your position on working with our competitors? Uh, horror story. So one of my previous positions where I worked at a pretty big lawn and landscape company, uh, about $13 million company, we contracted with a variety of different marketing vendors. Some of them were just for project work. And I really don't think there's a conflict of interest if you have an agency build your website and a competitor's website, because all that information is pretty much public. You can see it there. But when you get into these uh, campaigns where they're placing digital ads or you're doing an ongoing approach to marketing, it almost creates a conflict of interest. Essentially, the agency is making these two clients compete against each other. So when you figure out something that works for one, you're also going to apply it to the other one because you want to see results. And that can, in a lot of cases, actually drive costs up for certain campaigns. And so one of the things you want to check is at what level do I have exclusivity? Question number four is this, what does your own marketing and sales approach look like? Now, if you're hiring someone to promote your business, they better be doing a lot of that for themselves. If a marketing agency is good and if they are experts, you're going to be seeing things that they're doing on a regular basis to promote their business. Experts, again, I told you I was going to come back to this experts. Experts are in demand. In order to create demand, that means that you're going to have to pour energy and creativity into that marketing funnel. And a marketing agency should also be marketing their own business. And they should have a limited scope of clients they can work with. That's a good way to understand if they're really experts. Another thing to consider is that experts, they're active thought leaders. They produce thoughtful content, not thought-ish or thoughtless content, but thoughtful. It should be content like you can't really find elsewhere. So go to that marketing agency's video channels or the blog or guest articles they might be writing in publications and see what they're up to because that's a good sign if they're active there that they are experts. The other thing to consider is that experts prioritize client work over begging for opportunities and also not scrutinizing prospects heavily. So if you get engaged with in the sales cycle with a marketing agency and they are too eager to get your business, um, like let's meet today, let's meet tomorrow, that can be a bad sign sometimes. Also, if you feel like you're just really getting a very strong sale, like they're selling you hard, that again could be a sign that they're not truly experts and they're really desperate for work. And if they're not asking you questions to make sure you're a good fit, that means that they'll probably take any work they can. And so you want to make sure that within their marketing and sales approach that they're really making sure that they have great fits for clients. Question number five, how are you different than your competitors, other marketing agencies? Well, it could be that they're similar in a lot of ways, but for the most part, a true expert is not interchangeable with another marketing agency. And so they might be able to identify some similarities, some differences, but if you're getting the feeling that they're a dime a dozen and they're the same type of agency, just with a different name, that could be a sign that you might need to dig a little further to find out really if they are indeed experts. Another thing to watch out for, and you can see this on their website, their social media posts, the things that they say at speaking engagements is experts don't use superlatives. They do not call themselves the best. They may be one of the best, but they don't make those claims that they're the absolute best. Instead, they let their clients say that. Uh, they understate their qualifications and they let their clients state that for them. And that goes back again to those testimonials that you might find in their website or if you talk to some of their clients for referrals. All right, the next group of questions relates to the marketing agency's services. And you'll find a lot of differences here from one agency to another. So these questions will help guide you. Question number six, what services do you offer and specialize in? An expert doesn't do everything and in fact, doesn't do everything very well. 
they choose a select group of specialty services that they focus on, that they feel that they're gifted in and may choose not to do other ones. So some of the services that you can find um, from one marketing agency to another uh, would be positioning, meaning like helping companies like yours, your lawn landscape company be positioned very well. Some of them will also specialize in messaging, like learning to create unique messaging strategies, both in written and visual content. The other thing that a lot of agencies will do is web development. So creating websites. Another thing that some agencies and some won't specialize in is content strategy and creation, like actually writing blog articles, writing website copy. Some of them will specialize in photography, like plan shoots out for you or video shoots as well, write those scripts. Another thing would be email marketing, paid advertising on Google ads or uh, Facebook. Some agencies may focus on recruiting lead generation as well. Uh, some of them will get into the sales process, meaning they'll look at pipeline reporting and sales tools that you can use that will connect with your marketing functions. So there's a lot of different services that agencies will specialize in and offer. That leads me to my next question. Question number seven is what services do you not recommend and why? This is a good one to explore because this will help you really look at the approach of the marketing agency you're talking to, because you're going to find that some of them will put all their eggs in one basket, and that might not be something you feel comfortable with. And so it's really important to understand what they don't recommend and if they have good reasons for not doing that. Question number eight is this, what services do you not offer, but you can actually offer me a little bit of support or direct me to another partner or resources so that I can participate in those marketing initiatives? I'll use this as an example, direct mail, sending out postcards, letters, mailers, that sort of thing. We do have a lot of clients because we've recreated their website, changed their color scheme, changed their font, rewrote all the central messaging on their website. It makes sense to have us also design some direct mail pieces just to make sure there's a cohesive brand image there and language and all that stuff. Whether we do that or not, I love to have our clients measure their results. And so one of the things that we might do is actually, if they have a direct mail piece or Clipper magazine ad or Valpack or something like that, I'll create a landing page for them and we'll actually help them to track how many visits and how many form fills. And then even like call tracking numbers, because I want them to be able to understand if that's working or not, but we don't get into the printing part of that and the, the mailing and actually that it part of the implementation. So the marketing agency that you work with might be able to provide at least some support from a strategic and creative direction, or even have some printers or other places that they would recommend that you use that they've gotten a lot of really great feedback from other clients on. So that's something to ask. Question number nine is this, how do you figure out the unique approach that you recommend for us both now and later. Approaches are going to differ from client to client, e even if you're within the same industry. You know, I think about our clients all within the lawn care and landscaping industry. Uh, well, a commercial landscaping client that focuses on giant contracts uh, of maintenance is going to differ from a residential design build client or differ from a tree care company or a lawn care program treatments company. So one of the things that you want to ask is how are you going to figure that out? How are you going to get to what should we do to fix our problems? One of the things that is very common in expert marketing agencies is for you to pay for that type of discovery. If it's going to take one of their team members a day to dig into all of your analytics and look through all your marketing assets and basically be collecting information on what your problems are and statistics and that sort of thing, and be able to come back with you with insights that are actually going to make sense and be uniquely tailored to your problems, you're probably going to have to pay for that. It might cost you a couple thousand dollars to pay for that, but it might be well worth it because your strategy will actually be based off of unique information. And your approach might change from time to time. It might be this set of problems for the first two years. And each year you can fix certain problems and you'll uncover new ones or not necessarily problems, but more opportunities to succeed. And so those are things that you'll want to find out from the beginning, how that's going to change as time goes on. Next couple of questions focus on the team, both within the agency, as well as the team within your company and the relationship and how people work together. And so question number 10 would be this, 
What can you tell me about your in-house and outsource team? So agencies are all over the place with this. So there are some agencies that they have in-house web developers, graphic designers, videography people, writers, strategists, other support staff, all those people are in-house. They're paid on a W-2. And then there are some agencies that they use outsource contractors to do that. In our case, we have a, a team right now of five people in-house that do a lot of this. And then there is a team, approximately 10 other people that we work with that have worked with us on dozens of projects, writers that have written hundreds of articles for clients, people that we consider part of our team. And those types of team members are super valuable. So it's not necessarily good or bad if they're in-house or outsourced, but you want to understand who you're working with. And that leads me to question number 11 is who will be working with us? And what does that really look like for our team and yours? Uh, a lot of agencies will have an account lead that will engage with you and be your main source that you go to for questions and will manage all your projects. But they might have other team members that get involved at various points in time. Like for our example, Emmett is our senior project manager and he handles all the website projects. So I'm involved in the beginning and then he takes over and then I come back into the situation for the long term. And we have people on the back end that reach out to other team members. So for example, how's your team involved? What are you going to be required to do on a weekly or monthly basis? Uh, do you need to have a monthly meeting? Who's the source for articles? Uh, who's going to come up with this? Who's going to come up with that? How much back and forth is there going to be? And that's a good question to ask in the beginning stages when you're interviewing marketing agencies. They should have a really good idea of that. As you're doing stuff back and forth, there's all these little projects that are going on. And so another thing that you might want to check on is what's the project management transparency look like? Is there a tool where I can come in at any point in time and see what things are due, what's past due, the conversations that are going back and forth in between uh, your team at the marketing agency? How can I just see that if I want to see that? So that's something to look into. And the last thing that I want to look at as we talk about the client relationship with a marketing agency is this whole topic of order taking versus expertise driven strategy. If you're working with an expert, they should give you a hard time from time to time. You know, I have this phrase I heard somebody say at one point in time, and I often tell prospects this on our first call is we don't have a problem telling people their baby is ugly. And if you think about it, you as a business owner, you're really close to things. I've heard the other expression of it's hard to read the label when you're stuck inside the bottle. And there's a lot of insight that comes from an expert that can look from the outside in or has seen this situation in another company and found a solution that actually worked. And maybe the way you're doing it isn't great. And they should be able to push back and you should have a push and pull relationship. They shouldn't say it's my way or the highway. Sometimes they should give you credit that you have great ideas. And so it's a good idea to find out what their position is on having a client relationship. All right. The next two questions are relating to results. Uh, you're probably wondering about that. And this is probably a question you probably would ask. Question number 11 is this, what are your expectations for our results? That can be hard to understand right away. So if a marketing agency hasn't been paid to do that discovery project, they might not be able to tell you exactly, okay, we think you're going to get this percentage of increase in website traffic, this percentage of increase in leads, but they should be able to ask you a few questions, see kind of where you're at as far as like how many leads you're actually generating through your website and other campaigns. And they should be able to compare your company versus another company that's pretty darn similar and be able to give you some anticipated ideas about where you might end up at. Like what's a first year typical return? What's a second year? What do you see with companies? There's a lot of variables that go into that, but they should have some initial gut expectations. And by the time you get to the point where you sign a proposal, they should probably outline some of those goals for you. Question number two is this, what metrics will you measure and how will you report on them? And so really common thing, something that used to drive me nuts is I used to just get this report from my marketing agency and I didn't know how to read it. It was just a bunch of numbers. I didn't know what CTR and all these different metrics were. I didn't know, is this good? Is it bad? Should it be fixed? Can we do anything? And I would just get this automated report. Well, the agency that we were working with, we actually didn't even really pay them that much. And so we weren't paying for that level of insight. So it's really great to ask that question in the beginning. Like, what does this look like? Do we have a meeting every month? 
Do you break it down for me and not just give me numbers, but tell me why those numbers are meaningful? How do you compare them? Are you comparing this May versus May of last year and the year before? And how do you present that to me? Do you send me a report? Do you send me a video? Do we have a meeting together? What does that look like? All right, two more questions to go. This next one, I'm sure you probably had right from the beginning. You probably wanted me to cover it right away. And that's, what's this going to cost? And that's an important thing that you have to figure out. And there's a, a few different sections of cost that I want you to look at. The first thing is the initial discovery. So do I have to pay for you to assess my problems and prescribe a solution for me? We have this exercise that we go through with our clients called a total growth review. And we look at five different areas and we really dig in. We spend a ton of time doing that. And they're presented with a lot of valuable information at the end of that. And they don't have a problem paying for that. So that cost is disclosed right away on our first call. And then after you go through that discovery and figure out how that aligns with your goals, you should get a proposal. Maybe they'll give you a couple different options on a proposal for an ongoing agreement, maybe a 12 month agreement, or maybe it's a smaller project. What does that break down? Are the payment terms equally each month? Is it bigger in the beginning, smaller in the end? How do you charge? Do you just charge these fees based on the value of what you're delivering? Uh, some agencies might even charge cost per lead or, or different things like that. So it's important to understand that. And then also understand that as time goes, there will be extra things that you think about doing or the marketing agency will suggest as ideas. And so those extra projects can sometimes be out of scope. So it'd be good to understand what's your hourly rate, What's an example, like if we add this mail campaign for design, what kind of would that add and understand the general ballpark of what you could expect if you tack on more things to your agreement. And the last thing is this, are there any charges outside of our agreement and your services that you're going to bill me for that I'm going to have to pay for? So are there subscription costs to different software solutions. If we're placing digital ads, is the ad spend included in your agreement or is that something that's outside of that? And if so, what do you think that I should budget? If you're running Google ads for eight months out of the year, what do you think the total budget should be? Those are important things to cover. And the last question has to do about your timeline. You have to have a good fit. You have to have a mutual agreement that your timeline meets their timeline. And so question 14 is what does the timeline look like to work together? Remember that experts are in demand and experts don't overextend themselves and make clients suffer in the name of just growing their agency. Experts have more opportunities than their current availability in most cases. And they don't rush things. They take time to do things right. They're not going to string you along as well if they can't work with you now. So it's good to understand, you know what? If we went through this process, when at the earliest date could we start to work together? Because you might need something to happen in the next three months to get started on this. And another agency might not be able to facilitate that for another six to nine months from now. And that's not a bad sign, just means they're in demand. And so timeline is extremely important for you to explore. And within that existing timeline, your engagement over the next 12 months, what does that timeline look like? How long does it take to get your website launched? How long does it take to set up certain campaigns? When can I expect these videos to be done? The list goes on. Understand what timeline they're working with so that you have the same expectations going into the agreement. All right, I hope these 14 questions have helped you understand how you interview a marketing agency to find a true expert to work with. Again, they might not score a 14 out of 14, but if you ask these questions and jot down some notes, you will figure out some clear front runners that you might wanna work with and some people you should steer away from. And ultimately, that's all I want. I want you to succeed. If you'd like to get more information on a regular basis about hiring a marketing agency, the best practices, what people should and shouldn't be doing, I would really encourage you to subscribe to our blog on the Landscape Leadership website. You can also follow me on LinkedIn. I post a lot of content there and you can also follow me on YouTube. I have a lot of silly, stupid videos that you might enjoy. Stay tuned. We will be coming out with new episodes of the podcast in the coming months and you might want to go back into the archives and check those out. If you found this episode of the podcast to be useful, just forward it to one of your industry peers, share it on social media so that they can also find a great marketing agency. Thanks so much for listening. Have a really great day.